So my dear friends, we have discussed in length the homeopathic management of acute diseases. Right from aphorism number 150 onwards to 170, we have learned all aspects of acute diseases. He has started with indisposition, then the homeopathic treatment of mild indisposition, then followed by homeopathic management of violent indisposition and how to find it out a right simulimum in acute cases, how those uh, patients get settled imperceptibly, if you are in some imperceptibly, all those things he has explained over there and he explained over there all the concept to find it out right remedy and after that he explained in four aphorism the regarding four five aphorism he has devoted to the concept of homeopathic aggravation also. And that also we have learned up to the aphorism number 160, 161. And 162 onwards to 170, we have discussed one more important thing. If we don't get a right remedy, we, if we get the partial simulimum, how to go ahead with the partial simulimum? And that aspect we have learned in thorough. So that even though we fail to find it out a right remedy on day one, it doesn't matter. You start the treatment and go ahead with the partial simulimum, remove whatever the symptoms are there, still whatever remains and newly added symptoms called as accessory symptoms. Make a new totality, find it out a right remedy and again go for the new simulimum till you achieve a perfect cure. And this is called as a um, homeopathic management with the help of partial simulimum and that we have discussed in detail. He has explained regarding all the possibilities which happens. If you get remedy right even with the partial simulimum, patient can be cured. If you don't get it, how to go ahead? If you get partial simulimum with 50-50% cases, how to go ahead? All pros and cons he has discussed regarding the homeopathic management of partial simulimum and that we have learned in detail. Now we have, he is turning towards the very important aspect. In fact, it is the crux of this organ of medicine, the homeopathic management of chronic diseases. Because Till Hahnemann, there was no treatment available regarding the homeopathic, uh, regarding the chronic diseases. In fact, no one was understanding this classification. No one was able to come to any remedy. He has spent 12 years to find it out the causes of chronic diseases. And thereafter, he came out with the homeopathic management of the chronic diseases. So hereafter, from aphorism number 171, he starts explaining about the chronic diseases and their management. So let us go ahead with the aphorism 171. In non-venereal chronic diseases, those most commonly therefore that arise from Sora, we often require in order to effect a cure to give several antisoric remedies in succession underlying this sentence. We often require in order to effect the cure to give several anti sori remedies in succession. Hanuman ne kabhi bhi kahi bola nahi ki give single remedy, single dose and patient is cured. It is not a magic. If you are treating the chronic diseases, it is not a single remedy will going to cure the patient every time. It happens once in one year or two years. If you have busy practice, once in a one year, you get such type of case that you give the one dose and patient cured. Otherwise, it is not a magic. He says that several anti soric remedies in succession, every successive one being homeopathically chosen in consonance with the group of symptoms remaining after the completion of action of previous remedy. Pratyek well, every time, whenever you are going to find it out, new remedy, anti remedy, it should be based upon whatever the totality is remaining. And you have to match that on the basis of totality of the symptom. You have to find it out, that remedy, on the basis of totality of the symptom. See, very, he was very clear regarding his concern. He has never mentioned anywhere that this is the remedy, patient's remedy, and follow it forever, lifetime, that's all. Such a misinterpretations are there and many people used to say boldly in front of people and they, pick, they fix this thought in people's mind. And this is the remedy and patients require this remedy forever. It's not like so. Because chronic diseases are never developed within a day. 
takes a long tedious process and if it is taking a long time to develop it goes to different different layers one by one one by one one by one and when patient comes to you he is either in the fifth layer he might be in the sixth layer in such a way patient comes to us how can it be to with a single remedy all layers will be vanished it is not so hanuman was very clear regarding his concept he knows that if it is because of sora if it is of because of non mineral myism it is not single antisoric will going to do everything but there will be several successive antisoric remedies will be required and this one should not forget these things are very very essential one has to understand many people make the concept that you select remedy for the patient and it's remedy for the patient forever not so not at all when you deal with the pathologies this never happens there are many people i have seen that they uh, makes the seminars on this and those cases remains forever in their seminar it is not so once in a while it happens with single dose it happens it is not always you have to go on changing depending on upon what the patient presents to us after the previous remedy so for example a patient who is bad with a bad asthmatic condition comes to you it is there since last 10 years and he is consuming lot of allopathic medicines and now he has become steroid dependent and now this patient is brought to you you find it out the recent totality recent complaints and on the basis of which you have selected certain remedy you have given that remedy and after that there might be a some future patient might be feeling well but still he is having the asthmatic problem only thing is that that if it, it is continuous it was continuously there earlier now it has been settled now he gets it specifically at certain time of the day certain time of the night certain modalities now the modalities have been changed now you get a second layer where you get a different remedy different antisoric you have to find it out so you have to take into consideration the recent symptomatology and find it out another antisoric remedy. then you give that remedy to the patient and now patient is settled much more now his complaints are going back and now he comes out with typical features all over the body presenting the boils all over the body or something like eczematous patches over the body and asthma is vanished so here again you have to find it out another remedy on the basis of present totality so you are going from one antisoric remedy to another antisoric remedy to another antisoric remedy in succession depending upon how the patient presents only thing is that you have to uh, be careful and watchful to find it out whether we are in right direction or wrong direction if we are on in right direction that is uh, uh, along the path of given by the herring's law of direction of cure then you don't have to worry if it is going from organs of greater importance to the organs of lesser importance just wait and watch whenever the patient feels there is a need to take the remedy just match the symptomatology and unless and until you match the symptomatology you should not repeat the same remedy so if you have chosen on day 1 the for that patient the natrum sulfuricum the natrum sulf will never remains forever his remedy natrum sulf might bring him outside of that asthmatic trouble but now the patient presents with skin manifestation and those skin manifestations are not covered under the natrum sulfuricum then you have to find it out the remedy which matches his recent totality another antisoric another defecting remedy so that it means that there are different layers with which patient has approached you have to cover all those and you have to be watchful if, whether it is going in right direction or not that's all that is the work you have to follow and second important thing don't fix in your mind that one remedy cures the patient forever it's not so when you are dealing with chronic it requires several antisoric remedies so underline that sentence the very important to give 
several anti-historic remedies in succession, every successive one being homeopathically chosen in consonance with the group of symptoms. So every time you have to take into consideration the totality of the patient and according to that totality, you have to pick, find it out another anti-historic remedy. So is it clear? So when you are dealing with the chronics, you, it is not fixed or it is not rigid and you should not be rigid to be fixed with your one remedy only. Now he turns towards the most important part of the chronic diseases, type of chronic diseases and which are in fact most difficult to cure. So he starts the homeopathic management of one-sided diseases from aphorism number 172. On your book, you just go on writing down 171, chronic disease, homeopathic management of chronic diseases. 172, one-sided diseases, homeopathic management of one-sided diseases. Why it should be written? It should be written in such a manner so that when you read it during exams, you just catch it very easily. One seventy-two. A similar difficulty in the way of cure occurs from the symptoms of disease being too few. This is the definition of one-sided disease. A circumstance that deserves our careful attention, for by its removal almost all difficulties that can lie in the way of this most perfect of all possible modes of treatment, except that is that its apparatus of known homeopathic medicines is still incomplete are removed. So most difficult cases are those cases where there is paucity of symptoms, which are having very few symptoms. So one-sided diseases definition is the diseases, chronic diseases in which there are very few symptoms are called as one-sided diseases. So for example, patient comes to you with directly with the liver cirrhosis, finished. It doesn't have so much of symptoms. There is ascites and liver cirrhosis. Now you don't have anything for prescription. It becomes rather difficult. Patient comes to you. I have treated one lady who, at the age of 75. She came to me and told me, Doctor, there is this wart is there and I want treatment for this wart. Finish. Actually, I went to surgeon. He said that you have op gone for under many operations and bypass surgery, so will not do surgery. You better to go to Dr. Asa. He will give homeopathic remedy and that's why I'm here. I asked her, what, what, does it matter anything for you? She says, why not? Yes, it matters. Next month, there is a marriage of my daughter-in-law. Dot my daughter, my mm, her relative, and I have to, I have to be there. What people will say? She has, this is the this is the case. And what about this ward? Does it trouble? No, there is no trouble. There is no symptom. There is only one ward finished. Now the case becomes difficult for you to treat. Because there is no symptom. Such types of cases are called as one-sided diseases where you don't have symptoms to prescribe and how to reach. That case I have treated with one remedy. I think I, you, you know better that case. I have shared that case with you. Mm. It was very interesting. No, elements from embarrassment was not there. Think over it. Logic is very important in that case. Logic was at the age of 75, a lady comes who is absolutely good looking, good natured. She was operated four or five times with different, different operations in childhood, with ton tonsillectomy thereafter. Early in the life, at the age of 33, 34, she was operated for mastectomy for CF. Breast, then she she had she was operated for thyroid enlargement, thyroid was removed, then she was operated for appendix, and before one year before she was operated for bypass. So this was the history. And now she was ready to another operation. 
But the question is that why at the age of 75, just a small wart on the neck? That is the beauty oriented fastidiousness of carcinosis. That is carcinosis. Because there was a history of cancer, see a breast operator earlier. I have given carcinosis to her. She was not uh, she was not believing on homeopathy. She said, yeah, these, these small tablets will they cure me? I said, let us try. Give me a one at least one month. So she came after 15 days. She said, little bit better, I feel. Doctor, is it settled? Only 15 days are remaining. And after 15 days she came and there was nothing like that. It has vanished. So you have to understand the, all those chronic diseases. And that's why these diseases are most difficult diseases what animals are. One-sided disease. And that's why he has given maximum time to explain the homeopathic management of one-sided diseases. Tomorrow we'll continue with this. The next aphorism he defines first what is what are one-sided diseases, and then he starts how to manage, then classification of one-sided diseases, then every according to the classification of one-sided diseases, then he explains the management. It is wonderful. You just make a chart of this, and then it will remain forever in your mind. So it's a wonderful thing which has been used, uh, which has been explained by Hanuman over there. Potency used is 30 because it was very superficial. So potency was 30 which was used. Three, four doses and thereafter nothing was given and it itself cured that patient. So thank you being there. Any queries, questions are there. We'll discuss. Otherwise, we'll stop. Sir, I couldn't find that thing what you read earlier, sir. There is no introduction in my book, uh, what I have, repertory of the Homeopathic Materia Medica, J.T. Kent. Mm. Okay, I will send you that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, Marathi me to nahi likha hoga. No, no, English me maine padha na. Right, right, sir. So, I, I will send you that, that paragraph. Sure, sir. Hmm. Okay. Hello, sir. Huh? Sir, when we give any complementary remedy for uh, skin disease or something like that, then uh, if we start with 30 potency, uh, then should we go on increasing potency like 200 or you uh, can, when we give complementary? It depends. For, if you are prescribing for skin and if you have started with 30 and if it works, then purpose of increasing the potency is very important. For what purpose you are increasing? Whether if the patient's okay. problem settles at 30, what is the question? Why do you want to increase the potency? You can increase to cure the internal disease because the disease lies at the metaphysical level. For that purpose, you might require, but the state should remain the same. If it remains the same, yes, you definitely repeat and go for higher potency. Uh, Certain skin conditions, eczema, uh, psoriasis, lichen planus, all those conditions are very deeper. They are not superficial. The, there is always a cause is psychosomatic or it is called as autoimmune or idiopathy. These are very deeper planes. So you might require a little bit higher potency bladder. So better to start with 30 and go higher gradually that will be better for you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, anything else? So, we'll stop today's session over here. We'll meet again tomorrow at the same time. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.